Thank you very much, and good morning to everybody. It's a tremendous honor to be here. Three and a half years ago, if I told my parents that I was going to drop out of medical school to move to Texas to farm crickets, they would have thought I was crazy. Uh, but uh, a year later, we proceeded to win the world's largest business prize competition, the Holt Prize, which was a million dollar prize, and that gave us the seed capital to launch our business. So before getting into what we do, let's talk a little bit about why we do it. We believe there are two of the biggest problems in the world affecting our future, and they're actually both related to food. The first one our judges very eloquently described, which is the problem of food security. And this is a problem that disproportionately punishes the poor. It's not having access to safe, affordable, and nutritious food. But there's a second, and I would argue, even bigger problem affecting all of our futures. And that's the problem of food sustainability. Today, our current levels of consumption of food, and particularly meat, are applying tremendous stresses and pressures on our planet. Most people in this room, if I asked you, if you were to take all of the crops on earth that are devoted to, far, to, to food and uh, amass them into a single landmass, how big of a landmass do you think that would be? Most people wouldn't appreciate that the amount of land on earth devoted to crops is as big as the entire continent of South America. And the amount of land devoted to farming livestock is as big as the entire continent of Africa. And that's not counting the fact that 80% of our fresh water, 80% of all fresh water on earth goes toward livestock and farming production. So while our category is food, the problem of food sustainability is impacting environment, it's impacting water, and it's impacting, ironically, food security. Because the more we consume our planet's resources to produce food, the, the more we perpetuate the vicious cycle of poverty that many others in the world live in where they can't afford food beyond, beyond their current means. And that's today, to feed seven and a half billion people. Over the next 30 years, we're gonna have three and a half more billion people, which means we're gonna need to double our food production today. So obviously, we need sources of protein that are eco-friendly, and at the same time, can deliver the proper nutrition to all of us. And luckily, there are many such proteins on Earth, but there's one in particular that we are tremendously excited about, and that's actually insects. Compared to the farming of traditional livestock, insects require drastically less land, water, and feed, and they emit a negligible amount of greenhouse gas emissions. But they're also superior in nutrition than most livestock alternatives. So the question many of you are asking is, great, who eats insects? And the answer is actually two billion people in 80% of the world's countries already eat insects as part of a diet. And those people actually tend to overlap in countries where food security is a problem. And believe it or not, the problem in these countries is not actually demand, it's supply. In, a, in Oaxaca, the southern state of Mexico, grasshoppers are more expensive than beef, chicken, and pork combined. And that's because they tend to be hand harvested, which makes them seasonal, unaffordable, and unavailable. So what we do is we address this problem by developing the most advanced insect farming technology in the world. And that allows us to be able to modularize insect farming, creating access to stable, affordable, and nutritious protein. But then there's also the rest of the world, and many of us in this room, who don't and haven't grown up with a tradition of eating insects. And this is tremendously exciting because many of us in the room may also not know that lobsters used to be considered the food of the poor. If fishermen accidentally caught lobsters in their nets, they used to mince them and throw them into their fields as fertilizer. And until today, there's a law in Maine that if you, if you were to feed a prisoner lobster more than three times a week, it's considered cruel and unusual punishment. So in this part of the world, we are experiencing a tremendous cultural shift where many of us are bec have become attuned to the ingredients and the traceability and the food supply of what we eat. And this is an extraordinary opportunity to educate many of the people in this room and outside of this room about why insect protein should move to the center of our plate. So to do that, as I mentioned, we established 
one of the largest and now the first fully automated insect farm in the world based in Austin, Texas. And we also have a farm in Kumasi in Ghana. And in our model in, in most part of uh, Africa, one of the things that we do is we empower, empower rural farmers and peri-urban farmers to develop insects to farm for themselves and to feed their own families. So the last thing I'll leave you with, and you're welcome to come to our booth later to try our granola made with our cricket protein powder, for those of you who've never tried insects, is that we try to position insects to consumers in this part of the world as not, uh, as being biologically safe and eco-friendly and efficient. So for most people, insects are a pest, they're a nuisance, they are disease vectors. And that's true for many insects. But we farm insects and give them organic feed and triple filtered water. They're frankly cleaner than more, most forms of livestock many of us in the room consume. But you don't have to take my word for it. You can come to our booth, try our granola, and it's been fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.